Okay, what's up? So I want to show you some cool stuff here. So real quick, before we even get started, I'll just put some images up on the screen of like the stuff that we're going to be doing. But let me tell you about why this is actually very important. So when I started Blender, like total noob, uh, when I was first starting out, I had the problem that most people have, which is it's hard to make things that actually look good because, you know, you get the software, you want to create cool things, but it's, you don't really know how to make things look realistic or fit together and look cool. So I was struggling to actually make anything that was good. What happened was I actually discovered Ducky 3D's YouTube channel. And I think this was a really big inspiration for this technique that I'm about to show you. He had a video on particle systems and I watched that and I realized that there was a lot that I could do without actually making something that had to be super realistic. So when I started using this technique, I went from just really bad renders that didn't make any sense at all to actually interesting images that weren't realistic, but they don't, they didn't need to be. So I could make tons of cool stuff. And it was kind of like the possibilities of what I could do just all of a sudden expanded because of this one technique. And uh, I've used it in client work now. I, I still use it all the time. Um, so yeah, let me, let me show you what this actually is. Basically, a quick overview is we're just going to be using particle systems to create complex shapes that would be really hard to model by ourselves. And we're going to use that and just spam it around and just make a cool environment using um, kind of clusters of particles like this. So I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do here. This will be an, a, a very specific example, but you can just you can model whatever you want and swap it for different different pieces. You don't have to follow exactly step by step what I'm doing, but I'll just show you um, an example of how this works. So let's take a cylinder and just make sure the I'll, I'll take the vertices down to like six or something because I, I kind of like this hexagonal type of thing. So something like this will be a good starting point. And basically my goal at this point is just to get some cool type of shape. That's that's it. Like it doesn't matter what it is. So I like these. Uh, hexagonal cluster type of thing. So I'll just really quick model um, just a really basic type of little thing here, which will be scattered everywhere. So it doesn't matter what it is. Just take some edge loops, bevel, extrude parts. Really doesn't matter. You could use this a square shape. It, it, I'm just using this as an example. We'll just um, inset certain faces, extrude that. Boom, delete those, and maybe just take this down a little bit. Okay, good enough for now. Okay, so let's take that, and you can see if I go into render view, it's just white. So let's put a basic texture on this basic model. So I'll just hit new. Let me go to my folder of stuff from textures.com. So I'll just open this up. And something kind of grungy, I think, is going to work well. So something like this. So this is just, if you go into textures.com, go to the concrete section of the like regular photo section. This isn't a PBR texture. This is just a regular image of concrete. Um, so you could go and photograph your own if you wanted to, or just download one from textures.com. Something with a nice amount of detail and grunginess, I think, is going to work well for this. You don't have to do this. If you want a cleaner look, go for something cleaner. But for this example, here's what I'm going to use. So let's take that, drop it in here, and I'll just run that straight into the base color. Uh, let's apply the scale and then select all vertices, unwrap it with a cube projection. And I'll just pull up the UV editor so I can see what I'm doing. Just move that r roughly like there or something. Doesn't really matter. I could take certain parts of this and scale them up and align them, but I am not going to spend too much time doing this. So. Something like that, good enough for now. You can see just some basic grunge is all we need. So what I'll do now is actually just take the same image, run that into the roughness, take a color ramp, drop it in there, and something like that will be fine just so there's some variation in the roughness, doesn't really matter. Let's quickly uh, bevel that, so just a quick bevel, that will be fine, just something. And maybe let's make a couple variations of this. So let's take this. If you go to edit mode, go to options on the top right, check this box right here, correct face attributes. What that means is now when I move these vertices around, it won't stretch the texture as opposed to if that's off, it will stretch it. So let's turn that on. Uh, just make some quick variations of this. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing just as long as we have some different kind of sizes and maybe I'll move the texture along so it's different too. Um, yeah, just basic, 
basic variations, doesn't really matter. Okay, good enough for now. So let's move these to a collection now. And um, so just hit, select all those things you just made, hit M, new collection, doesn't matter what it's called. And now what I'm gonna do is take these and scatter them onto an object so we get sort of a cluster of these pillars. Um, and then I'll use those clusters to form some type of cool environment. So I'm rushing through this, but I would suggest spending a little bit more time getting these to look a little bit nicer than I am here, but just you get the point here. Okay, so I'm going to use geometry nodes to scatter these, but you don't have to use this. You can use, you could also use a particle system, like a hair particle system. Um, the only reason I'm using geometry nodes is because it's just a bit easier to scatter stuff with it, I find. But if you don't like it, you can just use a hair particle system. It doesn't matter. Okay. So let's go to the geometry node section, press new. And this is, I'm going to kind of speed through this because this is the basic, like, uh, super basic geometry node setup that you've probably already seen before. If you haven't, I'll just link to a video of somebody else explaining in depth of what this actually is. But basically, like, it's just like a particle system, just randomly scattering these objects onto another object. So distribute points on faces. So now we uh, just get a bunch of random points. Let's take a instances on points. So we want to instance these things onto those points we just made. And we can take a collection info instead of an object info collection info because we have all these objects inside of a collection choose the stuff collection that i just made run that into the instances and then there's three boxes we need to check for this to work those three things are these right here so separate children reset children and pick instance check all those boxes and or else it will not work okay so now we have these objects being scattered onto this plane and you can see if I scale up the plane, it's going to scatter more of those objects. Um, you can see as I scale it up, it's going to do that. That's in edit mode, by the way. If I scale it in object mode, it's not going to do that unless I apply the scale. Same thing as doing this. Um, so now what I want to do is I want randomness. I want randomness in the rotation as well as the scale, kind of like you'd get in a particle system. So if I turn this up, it's going to rotate all of them. Same with the scale. But... Um, I want it, I want some bigger and some smaller. So you could do that with a random value. If you just, if you just search for a random value, plug that into the scale. Um, so let's do like the minimum, maybe 0.2 maximum, something like that. doesn't matter. And then same thing for the rotation. We'll just take a, another random value, switch it over to vector so that we get, uh, controls for the X, Y, and Z because we only want to add Z rotation, not X and Y. So just plug that into the rotation, zero everything out, and let's just turn up the Z. So we're just getting random randomness on the Z. I could snap this. So if I take a vector math and plug that in here between where the, the random value is going into the rotation, if you change this to snap, and this is, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is just a quick, quick way. Um, as I turn this up, it's it doesn't really seem like it's adding any order to this, but eventually it, you will actually land on a value that snaps them to the proper angle. And you'll see what I mean, like right here, for example, so 2.95, and it's close enough. Not perfect, but it's close enough. And a little bit of subtle variation is gonna be fine. So basically the point of that versus just having them all rotated the same is now they're going to be randomly rotated, but um, it'll snap to like the proper uh, angle that it should be at. So it's still in line, but it's still randomly rotated, if that makes sense. If I take that out, you can see, yeah. Or if I have no rotation, now they're all lined up the exact same. But if I use this, then they're they're lining up and they're like snapping to these, uh, like they're lining up with each other, but then it's uh, we're still getting randomness. Okay, you don't have to do that, but it's it just a better random rotation is always nice. Okay, so now that I have this, let's go to rendered view. And you can see right away, like cycles just makes this look so much better with adding shadows and stuff. So there's a lot you can do with this. You can just scale it down like this and kind of spam it around. Or you can um, 
you know, expand this a lot, have tons of stuff like this. Um, yeah, there's, there's really unlimited things you can go, you can do from here. So I'll just show you an example of what you could do. Let's go to render view over here. Just go to the camera perspective. I'll go back to solid here. So maybe let's take some water. I'm going to also add a plane down here just for a, a base underneath it, like a floor. It's actually scale us down. Maybe let's do it in edit mode so the texture stretches with it. So yeah, I'm just going to spam these around a little bit and get some cool stuff. Um, so you can see just by taking the same exact cluster, moving it around in different places and changing the scale, you can get a lot of variation really, really fast. Um, so let's just do this. Maybe take another one of these over here, over here. Uh, maybe another one like up here. That's kind of cool having some above. And look how much complexity we're getting with just a couple of basic models that we made. So let's do some, uh, some just quick lighting just to get this to look good. So maybe let's do a sky. If you haven't seen my uh, tutorial on making skies, I recommend you go watch that. So that's, I'm just using the exact thing that I showed you there. So let's just take any image of, yeah, a nice sky. So just boom, unsplash. Um, let's see, I have a folder for this. Skies, let's take, this one looks cool. Okay, take that, run it into the emission, run it into the base color, and maybe the alpha as well. And we could actually take this and just duplicate it around so we get uh, reflections from the environment. This is kind of like a janky HDRI, but it's, it's kind of cool. That's kind of nice. And then let's also line this up a little bit better. So right there, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so you can see by just taking this one model that we made, literally just spamming it around a bunch of times um, with random rotation and scale, you, you can get some really crazy stuff uh, without really knowing what you're doing. Um, so let's just do something like that. Boom. Let's just give this a quick test render just to see what it looks like. And there's a lot more that I'd want to do here to get this to actually look good, but this is a nice starting point for, um, like, this is how a lot of my stuff starts. It's just like messiness, but still a cool idea. And it's too bright right now, so I'm just going to take down the environment. So it's just cool. So let's do some quick volume. So just cube over this, uh, new texture, take a quick volume scatter. 0.01 and point, uh, let's do 0.8 on the, this, on the anisotropy, um, display as bounds. And then you can see what that's doing. Maybe let's take a quick point light and just take that way up, make it like yellow. Uh, that's, that's too much. Let's do a little bit less. Cool. That's pretty nice. looks like a sun and yeah, cool. Maybe we could even zoom out to like 16 millimeters. That's kind of sick actually. So let's try that. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just messing with like the positioning of these to find uh, just a cool composition that works well with this. Anyway, so you get the point. Um, I'm not gonna make this into an actual finished thing, but you get the point of how this could be super useful. Um, I'll, I'll show you again. Here are some examples of where I've used this in like my actual artwork. So you can see, you can, Instead of scattering it onto a plane, you could actually scatter this onto any object. So here's one with like um, scattering it onto a skull model, kind of the same technique, but just instead of a, a putting it onto a plane, just putting it onto a face or a skull. So you could do that. Um, but then once you have this cool shape, it just comes down to like finding cool lighting and a cool composition to to set things up with. And that's really it. Like you can, there's so much stuff you can do with this. That's that. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. So yeah, go out, make some cool shit with this. Show me if you want, send me, send it to me on Instagram. I always love seeing that. And um, yeah, I'll see you around. Peace.